Let's talk about bonding in polyatomic ions and compounds that have polyatomic ions in them. So a whole bunch of polyatomic ions, this is just a small list of some of them. But they all share one thing in common, and that's that they all are a bunch of atoms connected together in a clump, and that clump then has a charge. Okay, that's what a polyatomic ion is. Let's take nitrate here, NO3, 1 minus. And we can draw the atoms in nitrate like this, one nitrogen and three oxygens. And this whole thing is surrounded by brackets because it has a charge of one minus. So nitrogen and those, these three oxygens, they're a clump together, okay? But what's holding the oxygens together with the nitrogen, right? What's the glue that connects these atoms together? It is actually covalent bonds that are attaching the oxygens uh, together with the nitrogen. So there is a covalent bond here, a covalent bond here, and a covalent bond here, keeping this clump of atoms together. So this is a little bit tricky because it means that in a compound like sodium nitrate, there are two types of bonding going on, okay? There's ionic bonding because opposite charges are attracting, okay? Because Na can take a charge of one plus, and NO3, as you can see right from the list here, has a charge of one minus, okay? So the Na and the NO3 are stuck together because of ionic bonds. Here, let me show you what I mean. So here's the Na plus, and here's the NO3 one minus. And these guys want to stick together because they have opposite charges. So it's an ionic bond here that's holding this whole clump together with this ion Na plus here, okay? Ionic bond, that's what I'm referring to here, is the attraction between these two things. So there are ionic bonds holding the positive thing together with a negative thing, but then there are covalent bonds that are holding all of the atoms together in this clump of atoms that's nitrate, okay? So uh, an ionic compound with polyatomic ions in it has both ionic bonds and covalent bonds, okay? Now I want to address another question. I want to explain why polyatomic ions have a charge, okay? Now this has to do with covalent bonding, Lewis structures, electron dot diagrams, and some similar things, valence electrons for example. If you don't know a lot about these already, no big deal. You can turn the video off and maybe you can watch it later when you do understand these things. But if you already have a background in this kind of stuff, you might be interested in how these clumps of atoms actually get a charge in the first place. Okay? So, as I said, it's all about covalent bonding for holding the atoms together in these polyatomic compounds. I mean, for, for holding them together in these polyatomic clumps. Okay? So, Let's take an example and see how the covalent bonding holding them together causes them to have a charge. Let's say that an oxygen atom wants to come together with one hydrogen atom. I want to look at how the covalent bonding is going to work, so I'm going to want to draw a Lewis structure. Okay? So, in order to draw a Lewis structure, I want to find out how many valence electrons there are in both of the atoms that I'm working with. Hydrogen is in this first column here, so it has one valence electron. To find out how many valence electrons oxygen has, I can count one, two, three, four, five, six. So oxygen has six valence electrons. Now when I'm drawing the Lewis structure, I add these two up, so I have seven total valence electrons that oxygen and hydrogen can share together, okay? So here's the first step. I'm gonna take oxygen, and I'm gonna draw it next to hydrogen, and now I'm gonna take my seven electrons, here they are, and I'm gonna arrange them around oxygen and hydrogen so that both atoms have full valence shells. Oxygen wants to have eight electrons, but hydrogen is happy with only two valence electrons in its outer shell, okay? So let me do this. Put a couple around oxygen like this, put two here for hydrogen to be sharing, and this is what I get. But this is a problem, okay? Because oxygen wants to have eight, but it only has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. Hydrogen is happy, it has a two that it wants, but oxygen is really pissed. 
It wants one more, but it only has seven total to distribute between these two atoms. So what can we do here? Well, this oxygen and hydrogen pair, they can steal an electron from somewhere else, and that's exactly what they do. Here it is. They pull this electron in from elsewhere, and we can say that it gains one electron. They needed this one more electron in order to make the bonding work, okay? But they gained an electron, and what happens if you gain an electron? You get a negative charge. So by pulling in this one extra electron to make the bonding work, now this clump of atoms, the oxygen and the hydrogen that are covalently bonded together, now they have a charge, okay? We can convert this electron dot diagram into a proper covalent bonding diagram here where I replace the shared pair with a line, okay, that means they're sharing two electrons. And then I put these dots for unshared pairs around the oxygen. And now I put the whole thing in brackets with a minus. This is what it looks like. And this is a polyatomic ion, okay? We call this hydroxide, and its formula is OH1 minus. Just once again, it's an O covalently bonded to an H, but in order for this covalent bond to work out, in order for both atoms to be happy, they had to grab an additional electron from the environment, and in gaining that extra electron to make everything work, the whole clump got a one minus charge. Let me show you another example. Let's say that one nitrogen is going to come together with four hydrogens. Let's do the math to figure out how we're going to draw the Lewis structure. Hydrogen is in this first column, so one, 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 one. Each one of these hydrogens has one valence electron to donate. One, two, three, four, five. Nitrogen is in this fifth column here, so it has five valence electrons. Now I want to find out the total number that we have, five plus one plus one plus one plus one. I lost count of how many I was doing. Nine total electrons, okay? Let's draw the dot structure for this. Nitrogen is, um, I only have one nitrogen, so chances are very high that it's going to be the middle atom. I'm going to put that in the middle, and then I'm going to arrange the hydrogens around it, okay? So now I have nine, at, nine electrons to distribute between these atoms so that they're all happy. Nitrogen is going to want to have eight electrons in its outer valence shell, and hydrogen is happy with two, okay? So let's do that. We've got nine electrons to distribute to make all of these atoms happy here. And if I put an electron between two atoms, it means that those two electrons are, it means that those two atoms are sharing the electrons and that a covalent bond is formed between them. So here's what we have. We have eight electrons distributed around nitrogen. Each of the hydrogens are sharing two electrons with nitrogen. So everything's happy, but I have an additional electron. Because you add up all the valence electrons, you get nine. So here's the ninth electron. But these guys, the nitrogen and the hydrogen, they're like, we're already happy, right? We, we have everything that we need. Nitrogen has eight, each of the hydrogens have two. They're like, what's the deal here? We don't know what to do with you. What are we going to do with this ninth electron? They chuck it out. They throw it away. So they take this ninth electron, and in order you know, for all of them to be happy, they're like, get out of here. And they throw it away, OK? So they lose one electron. This group of atoms loses an electron. If you gain an electron, you get a negative charge. If you lose an electron, what happens to you? You get a positive charge. So this whole thing has just become a polyatomic ion because it's a clump of atoms covalently bonded together that has a charge. It looks like this if you want to uh, draw the covalent bonds between them with a 1 plus, And we call this ammonium. You might be familiar with it because it's one of the polyatomic ions that's on my list. Ammonium, NH4, 1 plus. Just once again, it gets this charge because it has nine total electrons, but it only needs eight. Is that eight? Yeah. It only needs eight. Uh, I'm really bad with counting. It only needs eight. And so it needs to get rid of that ninth electron. And in doing so, it loses it. 
and it gets a positive charge. So there are all these polyatomic ions that we've talked about. As I keep saying, just a small number of them are on my list here. But all of them are clumps of atoms held together with covalent bonds, and they all have charges. And as you've just learned, the reason why they have charges is because in order to make the covalent bonds work between these atoms, they either have to gain electrons or they have to lose electrons. And so that's why these polyatomic ions have a charge. They have to gain or lose electrons to make the covalent bonding work.